Today I want to talk about practical uses for the ternary operator. Now the ternary operator is a simplified version of an if-else statement. And what I want to show is some basic usage. So whether you're doing it in Node.js or in the browser, doesn't really matter. The ternary operator works in both places. But I also want to give uh, an example that you can use with HTML too. So that's why I'm putting this inside of an HTML file. Now, just as a reminder, the falsy values, so if statements, ternary operators, what you're looking at is you're asking the computer to decide if something is true or false, or truthy and falsy. In JavaScript, these six values, zero, null, undefined, false, empty string, not a number, those six things are falsy. Everything else is considered truthy or true. So these things are false, everything else will be considered true. So basic ternary operator. Let's say we've got the, this variable here, age. With the ternary operator, what you're going to do is you're going to have some sort of condition, just like you would in an if statement. And you can wrap this in parentheses if you want. Just makes it easier to read. So if age is greater than 50, that's my question. That's the question that I'm asking. So this is how the ternary operator works. You put the question mark, then we've got two things that can happen. They go inside of these two places right here. So if this statement comes back as truthy, this code will run. If it's falsy, this code will run. And you're limited really to just one command, one thing that you can do. So I could come up with a value or I could put a command in here. I can say console.log and okay, well, if the age is greater than 50, here's our string that we're going to write out. And if we are less than or equal to 50, we'll say console.log. Okay, boomer. There we go. So there's our two things that we're doing. Now we'll take a look at this in the browser. And there it is. Okay, boomer. I run this again, refresh. There it is. So okay, boomer came back as the answer because this statement returned a falsy value. 42 was not greater than 50. So the answer to this was false. Therefore, this is the one that ran. Now, if we change this, change the sign, let's say, okay, if we're less than 50, this will be the string that comes up. So I come back in here. There it is. Okay, Zoomer. So it's really just a, a true false. It's like an if else, but compressed into a single line of code. Now we can use it for assignment. This becomes a little bit more practical. It's not just two different things. If I put just a value inside of these two places, I can actually assign it to another variable. So we can say let result equal, and let's find out if this is an odd or even number, this num. So we can say, here, let's make this a random number. There's math.random, and multiply it by 20 so we get a range, and we'll round it down. There we go. So I'm going to get a, a range of integers from 0 to 19. My result, what I'm going to do in here is say, okay, if I take that number, divide it by 2, if the remainder is equal to 0, it's an even number. So that's my question that I'm asking. My response is going to be the string even or the string odd. So if this is true, this statement right here, if this is true, result will be this string. This value will be assigned to that variable. And we can console log that out. There we go. And we should actually put our number inside of here as well so we can see that it is true. So odd, nine, great. Let's clear this out and run it a few more times. Even is six. 16 is even, 8 is even, 13 is odd, 16 is even. So we're getting it. This is great. We're getting the answer coming back. So we have not just used a ternary operator to run a statement. We're actually creating a value and assigning that to a variable based on some condition. Okay, great. 
I'm going to comment this so we don't have as many console log statements happening for our next tests. Nested ternary operators. So I'm sure you've seen if statements where there's another if statement nested inside of it. We can use this to have multiple ranges, not just a, a yes or a no, even odd, true, false sort of condition, but multiple conditions. So let's take a look at how we do that. Let's say I'm going to have a, a tax rate for three different ranges. We'll say under 20,000, the tax rate is going to be zero. If we have a salary that's greater than 100,000, we'll set the tax rate at 30. And if it's anywhere in between, we'll use 20 as the range. So our statement, our first one, we're going to say if salary is less than or equal to 20,000, that's my question. The true response, so if this comes back as yes, a true, truthy value, zero is going to be the number that's assigned to the tax rate. Otherwise, well, you'd think, okay, this is everything else. Anything above 20,000 is going to fit into this category. But I can put another ternary operator right here. So I can say salary greater than 100,000. And we can use, to make this a little bit easier to read, the numeric separator. This video link right here talks about um, this character right here, the numeric separator. So if you don't know what that is, you can take a look at that video. So salary, if it's greater than 100,000, then 30 is going to be the tax rate. Otherwise, it's going to be 20. So here's my different conditions. If it's less than 20, we get the truthy value, 0. That goes into here. So it's being assigned. Now I've got, if it's not less than or equal to 20, we have another ternary statement that's been embedded in here. Greater than 100,000, set it to 30, otherwise 20. And if we console log out our tax rate, we should get our 60,000 coming back. Or the tax rate for the 60,000, which is our 20. Great, so that's working. And then the last part I want to talk about is using this with HTML. Let's say you're trying to find out whether or not something exists on your page. Is there an element with this class name, side? If there is, I want to do something with that. So I'll say, there's my question, side. Does side exist? Well, the query selector is going to send back undefined if it does not find this thing, which is one of our falsy values. So I'm checking to see, does this thing exist? If it does, great. Put side into here. So it's just basically pointing to the same thing. We're not making any changes. Otherwise, I'm going to say document.body. So this element is either going to be the thing with the class side, if that exists, or it'll be the entire body element. So up here, I do have something with the class side, so I should get that. And then I'm going to say side.className equals hey. Just that's a class that I created up in the top, which will change the background to green. And there it is, the sidebar element, the section right here with the class side. We found it, it existed, so we set it to green. Now if I change this from side to say sidebar, now there isn't anything with the class side. This will be undefined, therefore document.body will be put into this variable, it'll overwrite the original value of undefined, and we're adding that class to the whole body. And there it is. All right, so there's a few practical uses for the ternary operator. Hope that helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those down below. I'll answer as many as I can. And as always, thanks for watching.